Hallo, wir sind hier bei Agentinnen.net und ich bin heute hier mit dem Jay, das ist der Sänger von Rival Sons. Hallo. Und <lacht> Sie spielen heute die Show im Kaufmann in Zoller. To a, a certain extent, um, you got your start through MySpace with uh, Scott stalking you. Um, do you ever get wistful, tear-filled flashbacks of those MySpace days? And um, what would you say are the most pronounced effects that social media has had on your band? Um, <clears throat> that's actually a good question. That sounds like a bad one, <laughs> but it's not. To, to get nostalgic about like how the band got started and everything, I'll catch myself every once in a while when we're on stage or and I'll be thinking about how fortunate we are that that we get to do this thing every day. And sometimes we get really tired of living together and being this close. Mm -hmm. 24 hours a day, seven days a week for six to eight weeks at a time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And most of the year, you can take things for granted. But um, I'm reminded sometimes of, of how incredibly fortunate we are that we get to do this, and that and that I get to have a life that's like wrapped around music, you know. So yeah, MySpace in particular, um, no. Neither that or Facebook. I'm not really a social media guy so much. Um, I didn't find Scott. He found me. I would never like looked around. It was more like um, keep in touch with friends that moved far away. So. And, and you asked me, what do I think the impact? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think that the impact remains to be seen because the. Like the 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 scale of of like of how how large the um, or how, how impactful social media is, it's growing in its own image, and it's the whole thing is snowballing. So it's kind of like you can't really put a barometer, or you can't like you can't measure it right now because it's constantly growing. And in terms of the impact specifically for bands or musicians or um, anyone really that's looking to promote themselves <clears throat> I think that it's given I think that it's empowered uh, people personally who have the drive to to grab a hold of this social media machine and um, and it's crippled the industry in a way and I don't mean the industry in terms of like big brother industry like the bad part of the industry the whole model of the, what the music business is is in such a catastrophic change right now it, like it's um, it's totally falling apart mm -hmm. so that I think that at one point it can be rebuilt in a better image so we'll see how that goes um You have performed with um, Alice Cooper, Easy Easy Kiss, and uh, many others. If you if you were going to have a crazy night out, hangover style, um, who would be the best partners in crime? My dad. Really? <laughs> yeah, my dad and my brother. Okay. You know, those are like my favorite, my family, mm -hmm. the favorite people to cut loose with, okay. aunts and uncles and everybody. Mm -hmm. And some of my hometown friends. <clears throat> um, you know, I've, I've never like wanted to party and like hang out with my the people that that were like my idols growing up and everything. Not that like Alice Cooper. Or who else is on this list? <laughs> you know, ACDC or KS or Sammy. Like there was no like these are good people. Sammy's actually really fun to hang out with because he he's a party animal mm -hmm. and he's he's a good guy. Um, uh, but like I never wanted to hang out and get to know like, my idols because mm -hmm. I always figured like I don't need to know everything about you mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the music is enough mm -hmm. so I just know them through the music and that's it so because otherwise once you get too close to the person it might affect how you see the music yeah. you don't want to do that music yeah. it's very special mm -hmm. that's right I try to have no friends at all 
so that they can just enjoy the music. Um, if you had to leave the band but could choose your replacement from any other band, who would you choose? Um, someone to replace me in Rival Sons. Uh, I don't think it'd be Rival Sons anymore. <laughs> but yeah, me either. I think um, it would have to. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've got friends, you know, like my friend Jameson, that. Uh, that is um, opening for us tonight. Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic songwriter and vocalist, and I, I think probably, probably him. If anybody else, I don't think there's anybody professionally out there that turns me on. And I mean, there, there are people that are really, really good. You know, I think that can sing better than I do and that can write better songs but I think that it would take a certain it takes a certain thing a certain <clears throat> chemical makeup you know um, Dave Grohl from Foo Fighters was recently quoted as saying you want people to fucking listen to your music give them your music for free and then go play a show what do you think about that? Well, I understand. I understand what Dave Grohl is saying. Um, <laughs> I think Dave Grohl's been out of the woods for a while, you know? I think he's been out of the woods and he's been in, he's been in the house for a while. Um, but in no way can, could I ever take away from his legitimacy as a musician, you know? And, and uh, every time Dave Grohl says something, people... Write something about it, <laughs> and I think that you need to give give him a little bit of slack because he, I think he has the right idea. He has the right idea <clears throat> with that statement because um, we, growing up, we thought that you could make a living off of selling records. You know, you you were taught to like, okay, we'll just try to get really good at making, at writing songs and recording. And if you do that, you'll be able to play shows and people will come and you'll be able to make money and um, everything will be all right. But we don't, that's not the truth now. Nobody buys records, so you can't make money. And I think that that's confusing for the generation that's just starting out right now. And they look back at it for say, like when Dave was coming up, for him to make that comment. I think they would look back on at it and go like, oh, you guys had it so easy. It's all relative when it comes to that that sort of a, um, perspective because no matter what, you're going to have to have that drive that he's talking about in that statement. Mm -hmm. You have to get out there and play no matter what. Okay, mm -hmm. well, you can't make money on selling records anymore. Okay, well, you can't. But you can support yourself by playing shows and booking a tour and if you want to do it, you're going to do it. And if you really, if it's a need, you're going to get ends met and you're going to make it happen instead of cursing, cursing the skies because you, you're not, you know, because the, the, the music business isn't the way it used to be. I think that you have to adapt. I think that's part of what he's saying. But like, if the nature of any part of the industry... The best music was always made with the most heart behind it. So, I would like to think that that's what Dave means. <laughs> I would like to think that. Um, <clears throat> if Nickelodeon were to make a Saturday morning children's cartoon based on your band, what would the show be about? <laughs> well, okay, I, that's, a, that's a good question too. If Nickelodeon were to make a Saturday morning cartoon about the Rival Sons band, I think that we, maybe they would turn us into um, problem solvers. Like maybe, because we would have the band and then we would have the crew. And like over there, that's Pete. And Pete's the scrambler. He's the spider and the one that gets it done. And then um, you would have, we would always get thrown into situations where uh, where we got to solve the problems, kind of like Scooby-Doo, where they got to solve the mystery. But it'd be the Rival Sons crew, like, 
like solving a problem for somebody. Okay. Like somebody's baby got caught in a tree. And like, what do we do? Rival sons are on the case. That's awesome. You know? I would watch that. And then you get Pete like scrambling us all together. And then the band, just like any band, kind of argues about real quick about how we should get it done. And then we formulate the best idea. And then, um, and then we get like our, our, our techs and our, our front of house engineer engineering the whole thing and, you know, recording it. And that's so that we can write a song about it after the day's done about how we help some old lady get her baby out of a tree or, you know, I don't know, whatever. Stop the, ca stop the cats and dogs from robbing a bank. Just like that, like Saturday morning cartoon stuff. Awesome. <laughs> um, if you were forced into doing a Rival Sons infomercial, what product would you be selling? Um, probably... Um, Rival Sons records. <laughs> if I could ask people to buy one thing, mm -hmm. uh, it would be better that we work for our own advancement of instead of somebody else's. But other than that, you know, something uh, something cool like uh, I don't know. I like black licorice a lot, mm -hmm. and um, you know, pickles. I, think I like pickles. Olives, things like that. I don't know. Okay. Um, when you were deciding on the name of your band, um, what other names were you playing around with? Do you still remember that? They were really bad names. Okay. So, um, like? They were just were bad. We, ne <laughs> we never tell anybody okay. what those names were. Okay. Uh, but that's the, that's the process. Mm -hmm. I mean, even a name like Rival Sons, I'm still not convinced that Rival Sons is a good name. You're not? Me. Well, no. We, it's like the band has to make the name. You know, now I kind of feel like, yeah, I think that's a, it's a strong name. Mm -hmm. But it, the music has to make the name mm -hmm. good. Because mm -hmm. look at like all of the big bands. Like the largest bands in the world. The name means nothing until the music's behind it, so. That's right. <clears throat> okay, the last one. Um, what is your favorite moment that you and your band experience together? If there is a specific moment. Jesus that Christ, that's a big question. Yeah. It's the best moment that the band's ever had. I think the other night in Munich was one of my favorite shows that we ever played. Mm -hmm. It was just like off the hinges. It was very. It was on fire, mm -hmm. and it was a smaller club that we were playing. But it felt like we we got to return to being like a small club band for one night, mm -hmm. and it was really rowdy. It was really rowdy, and it felt dangerous. Mm -hmm. It felt good. <laughs> awesome. So, you know, yeah. we'll try that. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Is that all of your questions? Yeah, I mean, I can ask some more if you <laughs> or. Hmm. Can you expect the dangerous show today too? Like I don't know. Munich, like in Munich? That depends. That depends on the ocean, the motion of the ocean out there. <laughs> It depends uh, what the energy is like, because you never know. Because the band does one thing, and then the audience does another thing. And then when we come together, it's how those forces meet that's going to define. Is it going to be good? Typically, yeah. It's going to be a good show because I think that the band, uh, the guys that are in the band are really good, you know, really good musicians. Everybody takes it really seriously. Mm -hmm. How good is it going to be? And what's going to be the, the climate, you know, and the temperature of everything? I can't tell you until it happens. How many shows uh, a week do you play? The typically five. Five to six. Wow, okay. Yeah, it evens out, like five to six shows a week. Do you ever get tired of it? Yeah. yeah. Don't I look tired right now? I have big bags on oh, my hands. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, of course you get tired, you know. We, uh, we're always on the move and everything. Mm. And it's for the guys that are in the band, you know, we work really, really hard for just like two hours out of the day. Mm. But for those two hours, 
like I know for me, I work really, really hard, and it's totally exhausting. Mm. But the other hours of the day, it's like occupying yourself, you know, like our, our techs, our tour manager, our front of house engineer, like those guys work, their work day is really long. Mm. You know, they work so hard and to help make the show happen. Um, but I think that all these things end up becoming, they become relative because you get used to a certain lifestyle. Uh, but yeah, I think that you get tired of the moving. Yeah, the traveling, right? Always being on the move, mm. you know, being in a different country every day, talking to strange, beautiful women with glasses and shawls in these obscure countries, you know. Obscure. <laughs> So. But still, I mean, it's a great experience, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that I think I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So no, it makes too. me feel good at the end of the day. Yeah. It makes me feel good, like when you when you start feeling down, or when you start feeling upset about the way things are going, yeah. or or bored, or or whatever. You got to remember that. feel like I was music is like a, I feel like it's like a, something that I was supposed to do mm -hmm. like it was the job I was supposed to have from a young age and so it makes you that like gives you a certain satisfaction mm -hmm. whenever you feel like really down mm -hmm. you Tired. just you can remember like you know it will in some weird way I know that I'm you have a certain oh, good purpose like I know what I'm doing you know okay. or I know that I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. doing. That's great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Of course. <laughs>